So I'm trained as a mechanical engineer, or more specifically an ocean engineer. Received my master's from MIT working on this really cool robotic tuna fish. So envision a 46 inch long undersea vehicle um, stuffed in a spandex bathing suit and you'll get the general idea. From there I went over to work at Walt Disney Imagineering R&D on full-size walking robotic dinosaurs. So envision a 12 foot long, 12,000 pound uh, triceratops powered by a Corvette engine. After finishing up at uh, Disney, I went over to iRobot for an amazing 10 years and had the opportunity initially to work at, uh, on a JV with Hasbro building artificially intelligent robotic baby dolls uh, where initially we built about 100,000 of them and that was a great opportunity to get started in high volume manufacturing. Based on that experience, Colin tapped me to lead the Roomba uh, manufacturing team and uh, I was flying back and forth to Hong Kong a couple times a month. Realized that for anything as complex as the five degree of freedom consumer electronic robot, it was absolutely necessary to have feet on the ground. So I uh, picked up and moved over to China for four years. Uh, that's where I met my co-founder Herman and uh, together we built a team of about 55 people in uh, Asia Pacific and used to build roughly 40,000 Roombas a week. And as a mechanical engineer and had the chance literally to sit down next to the workers on the line, get my hands dirty and understood what it took to actually put together a, a product. And over time I worked my way um, up to the VP of Asia Pacific. Uh, had, and during that process I had the chance to sit literally in everybody's seat along the way from thinking about how do you pick a factory to how do you put together a quality plan to how do you handle costing and sourcing. Um, so we lived this stuff firsthand and as our customers do now, like I, I can um, completely appreciate what it takes to build a product. So after 10 great years at iRobot, I decided to go out on my own and uh, talk my co-founder Herman Pang, who's based in Hong Kong, into joining me. So we started Dragon. And really what we realized is it was getting easier and easier to build a hardware prototype, but it was still insanely hard to figure out how do you go from one to many if you haven't done it before. There's a lot of forces making it easier and really lowering the, the walls to innovation for going from the idea to the prototype stage. One was 3D printing, so it was much, much less expensive to get a, a fully functioning mechanical model than it ever was before. We also saw advent of things like Arduino. So back in the day when we were doing the Roomba, we used to build our own H bridges from scratch. We'd be down at the bare metal, setting the components and uh, doing the firmware. Whereas today with an Arduino in 10 minutes or half an hour, you can be wiggling motors uh, in no time and really focus at a higher level of solving a problem rather than working on the basic engineering. So this was incredibly empowering and there's this kind of the early dawn of the hardware revolution of everybody getting into it. But then they would stumble in, um, from the prototype to high volume. Sometimes they'd look at Alibaba and pick a factory that wasn't well suited for them or they would just have so many unknown unknowns that um, they'd get lost along the journey trying to figure out you know, how much does a product actually cost and is there a business model behind it? How much money does it take to bring the product from a prototype to the shelves? Uh, what's possible from a design standpoint that's manufacturable? And fortunately for us, you know, we'd lived, uh, we'd lived that for the last uh, 10 or 15 years, or I guess collectively at Dragon, we've been doing this for about 300 years. So we knew how to get from the prototype to the high volume and really had an amazing opportunity to work with some of the pioneers like Brie over at MakerBot uh, to um, take the, the prototype and figure out what does it cost, how long does it take, how do you pick a great factory, how do you negotiate the manufacturing service agreement, how do you put together a quality plan. That's one of the huge uh, unknown unknowns that would frequently get people so that you make sure that the product you're shipping not only delights the, the customer but is going to last for years to come. Um, so it's a great experience every time. So Herman and I took the knowledge that we had. We brought in a bunch of folks we worked with a long time before at iRobot uh, to start Dragon and started working with companies sort of as an API for manufacturing so that we could help them build their product and then they could focus on what they did best, uh, the product itself, the market, and um, how to grow.